The biggest myth in education. Education is filled with ideas that guide teaching methods and curriculum design, but not all of them are grounded in research. Among the most pervasive is the myth of learning styles. Many educators and learners alike believe that people have specific learning styles, such as visual, auditory, or kinesthetic, that if matched, lead to better learning outcomes. While it is an attractive notion, decades of research have consistently failed to support the idea that catering to learning styles improves learning. This video will explore the origins of the learning styles myth, why it persists, and how educators can move toward more evidence-based teaching practices. The Origins of the Learning Styles Myth The learning styles theory gained popularity in the 1970s when various models emerged, categorizing learners based on their sensory preferences. One of the most famous models is the VAK system, that is, visual, auditory and kinesthetic system, which suggests that learners can be classified by their preference for visual information, seeing, auditory information, hearing, or kinesthetic activities, doing. The theory aligns well with our intuition. People seem to have preferences in how they absorb and process information. It appeals to the idea of personalized learning, suggesting that if we match teaching methods with these styles, we can improve learning outcomes. However, this concept, despite its wide adoption, has little scientific backing. Why does the learning styles myth persist? 1. Intuitive Appeal The learning styles theory is intuitive. Most of us can recall moments when we preferred one method of learning over another. For example, some may feel that they learn better from diagrams, visual, while others might prefer listening to lectures, auditory. The appeal of this theory is that it feels personal and respectful of individual differences. We are drawn to the idea that customizing learning can unlock potential in ways traditional one-size-fits-all methods cannot. 2. Commercialization the rise of the learning styles myth coincided with the expansion of educational tools and resources. Many educational companies developed tools, assessments, and workshops designed to identify and cater to different learning styles, turning it into a lucrative industry. With so many resources invested in promoting and sustaining the myth, it became ingrained in educational practices. 3. Confirmation Bias Teachers and learners often observe students displaying preferences for particular learning methods. A student who performs well on a task involving charts and graphs may be labeled a visual learner, reinforcing the belief in learning styles. However, this overlooks the possibility that the student's success may have more to do with content mastery or the specific skills required, rather than the mode of instruction. 4. Lack of exposure to educational research Many educators are not trained to critically assess research in psychology and education. As a result, they may rely on anecdotal evidence or the advice of colleagues, perpetuating myths like learning styles without realizing there is little empirical support for them. What does the research say? Research consistently shows that the idea of learning styles is a myth. Numerous studies have examined whether students perform better when taught according to their preferred learning style. The results have overwhelmingly shown no significant improvement. One of the most comprehensive reviews, conducted by cognitive psychologist Dr. Daniel Willingham, found no credible evidence to support the notion that teaching in a way that matches a learner's preferred style enhances learning outcomes. What does work however, are methods that align with the content being taught. For example, visual aids can be effective when teaching geometry, but not because some students are visual learners it's because the subject matter lends itself to visual representation. Similarly, kinesthetic learning might be useful in subjects like physical education, where learning by doing is essential, but this does not mean that someone labeled a kinesthetic learner will universally benefit from kinesthetic methods across all subjects. The Cognitive Science Behind Learning Rather than focusing on learning styles, modern educational research emphasizes cognitive processes that are universal to all learners. These include Working memory. We can only hold a limited amount of information in our minds at any given time. Effective instruction reduces cognitive load, allowing students to focus on what's essential. Retrieval practice. 
learning is strengthened when students practice recalling information. This engages memory processes that make learning more durable. Spaced repetition. Instead of cramming, spreading out learning over time helps consolidate information into long-term memory. Interleaving. Mixing up different types of problems or topics, rather than focusing on one for an extended period, helps students apply what they've learned more flexibly. These methods are grounded in decades of research in cognitive psychology and have been shown to improve learning outcomes across diverse populations. Moving towards evidence-based education. To move away from the learning styles myth, educators should adopt evidence-based strategies. Here are a few approaches that can be more effective than tailoring instruction to learning styles. 1. Universal Design for Learning, UDL. UDL is a framework that suggests creating multiple means of engagement, representation, and action in the classroom. Instead of focusing on an individual's learning style, it offers various ways for all students to access the material, engage with it, and demonstrate their understanding. This approach considers the diversity of student backgrounds and abilities and seeks to provide equal access to learning for everyone. 2. Differentiated Instruction While learning styles are a myth, students do have varying levels of readiness and interest. Differentiated instruction acknowledges this and adjusts the content, process, or product based on student needs. For example, some students may need more challenging material, while others require additional scaffolding. 3. Formative assessment. Teachers can use formative assessments to gauge student understanding throughout a lesson or unit. Instead of assuming that students need information presented in a particular style, formative assessments provide real-time feedback, helping instructors identify areas where students are struggling and adjust their teaching accordingly. 4. Active Learning Research shows that students benefit from active learning techniques, such as collaborative group work, problem-solving activities, and hands-on experiments. Active learning engages students in the material, prompting them to apply what they've learned rather than passively receive information. 5. Metacognitive Strategies Teaching students how to think about their learning, metacognition, can significantly improve their academic performance. This involves encouraging them to reflect on how they learn, plan their studying, monitor their progress, and make adjustments as needed. These strategies give learners tools to take control of their education, rather than relying on the idea that they can only learn in a particular style. Debunking the myth, enhancing education. The belief in learning styles is one of the most enduring myths in education, but it's time to move beyond it. The evidence is clear, teaching to specific learning styles does not improve learning outcomes. Instead, educators should focus on cognitive science-based practices like retrieval practice, spaced repetition, and formative assessments to enhance learning for all students. The persistence of the learning styles myth shows how deeply intuitive but flawed ideas can take root in education. Breaking free from these misconceptions requires a commitment to evidence-based teaching, ensuring that every student benefits from practices proven to enhance understanding and retention. In summary, learning styles do not enhance education. Cognitive science offers better approaches to teaching and learning. The shift towards evidence-based education will benefit students more in the long term. The key takeaway for educators is that learning is not about catering to individual styles, it's about using proven methods to help all students succeed. If you found value in this video please give it a thumbs up, like and subscribe to support this channel. Please share across social media platforms to reach a wider audience. Transitioning away from the concept of learning styles and toward evidence-based teaching practices requires a multi-step approach, combining professional development, classroom strategies, and ongoing reflection. Here's a comprehensive guide for educators. 1. Educate teachers on the science of learning. Many educators were trained under the belief that learning styles are key to effective teaching, so it's essential to debunk the myth with a solid foundation in the science of learning. Schools and institutions should provide professional development opportunities that focus on Cognitive science. Introduce teachers to research-based practices in how the brain learns, such as the role of working memory, long-term memory, and cognitive load. 
evidence-based methods, offer training on effective teaching strategies like spaced repetition, retrieval practice, and interleaving. This can include workshops, seminars, or online courses on how to integrate these practices into daily teaching. Teacher education is the first step, professional development needs to emphasize the shortcomings of learning styles and present alternatives grounded in research. 2. Encourage a growth mindset in teaching. Shifting from a fixed belief in learning styles to evidence-based practices requires a mindset shift. Encourage teachers to adopt a growth mindset, not just for their students, but for their teaching methods. Experiment with different strategies. Encourage teachers to be open to trying new techniques, such as active learning, differentiated instruction, and formative assessment, even if they challenge traditional beliefs. Celebrate small wins. As teachers begin to see the positive impact of evidence-based methods, celebrate those successes to reinforce that growth and change are possible. Fostering a growth mindset helps educators embrace change and adopt more effective teaching methods. 3. Implement formative assessments. Instead of relying on the perceived preferences of students, visual, auditory, etc., educators should use formative assessments to get real-time feedback on student learning. Check for understanding. Use low-stakes quizzes, exit tickets, or quick classroom polls to gauge how well students are grasping the material. Adjust instruction based on data. Rather than teaching to a particular style, formative assessments allow teachers to identify gaps in understanding and adjust their instruction accordingly, catering to the actual needs of students. Use assessments to tailor teaching to student needs, not learning styles, ensuring a focus on effective comprehension and skill building. 4. Use Universal Design for Learning UDL. UDL provides a framework for creating flexible learning environments that accommodate the diverse needs of students, without relying on the concept of learning styles. Multiple means of representation. Provide content in various formats, text, images, videos, and hands-on activities. This allows all students to access information in ways that suit the material. Multiple means of engagement. Engage students in different ways, such as through discussions, collaborative projects, and independent research, fostering deeper connections with the material. Multiple means of expression. Allow students to demonstrate their knowledge in a variety of ways, such as presentations, written essays, or creative projects. UDL creates an inclusive classroom that meets diverse learning needs, focusing on the content rather than imagined learning preferences. 5. Adopt active learning techniques. Active learning strategies engage students in the learning process more effectively than passive approaches like lectures. Collaborative work. Encourage students to work together to solve problems, explain concepts to one another, or complete group projects. This social interaction fosters deeper learning. Problem-based learning. Present real-world problems that require students to apply what they've learned, encouraging them to think critically and creatively. Hands-on experiments. For subjects like science and engineering, hands-on activities help students internalize concepts by directly applying them. Active learning involves students more deeply in the material, leading to better understanding and retention than passive methods like lectures. 6. Promote metacognitive skills. Instead of teaching students according to a perceived learning style, help them understand how they learn best through metacognitive strategies. This means teaching students to reflect on their learning, encourage students to regularly think about what study methods work best for them and how they can adjust their strategies based on feedback. Set learning goals. Help students set specific, measurable goals for their learning, focusing on areas where they need improvement. Monitor progress. Teach students to regularly assess their progress toward these goals, adjusting their approach as necessary. By encouraging students to reflect on and manage their learning, educators equip them with lifelong skills that go beyond surface-level preferences. 7. Build a culture of evidence-based practice. Schools and educational institutions can support this shift by fostering a culture where evidence-based teaching is the norm. Create collaborative teacher communities. Encourage teachers to share their experiences with evidence-based practices, discuss what works, and collaborate on developing effective strategies. 
Stay informed. Promote ongoing professional development through access to educational research journals, conferences, or online platforms that share the latest insights in cognitive science and education. Leadership support. School administrators should provide teachers with the time, resources, and encouragement to explore and implement new strategies. Leadership support is critical for creating lasting change. School-wide support for evidence-based teaching ensures that teachers have the resources, collaboration, and encouragement they need to implement these methods. 8. Debunk the learning styles myth in the classroom. It's not just teachers who need to move away from learning styles, students and parents often believe in them too. Educators should take the opportunity to explain the research, briefly explain to students why learning styles are not supported by research and how focusing on evidence-based practices will help them learn more effectively. Model effective learning strategies. Demonstrate study techniques that work for all learners, such as retrieval practice or spaced repetition, showing students how to apply these methods themselves. Educating students and parents about effective learning strategies creates a more supportive environment for evidence-based education. Building a better educational future. Transitioning from learning styles to evidence-based teaching practices requires intentional effort and a willingness to challenge deeply held beliefs. By focusing on cognitive science, active learning, formative assessments, and metacognitive strategies, educators can enhance the learning experience for all students. This shift not only improves student outcomes but also empowers teachers with tools that are grounded in scientific research. Key Takeaways Professional development in cognitive science and evidence-based methods is essential. Universal design for learning and formative assessments provide practical frameworks for inclusive, effective instruction. Active learning and metacognitive strategies engage students deeply and encourage them to take charge of their learning. Support from leadership and a collaborative culture ensure sustained success in moving away from learning styles. Educators who embrace these changes will find that their students learn more effectively, retain information longer, and engage more deeply with the material, ultimately leading to a more successful and fulfilling educational experience. If you enjoy this video please give it a thumbs up, like and subscribe to our channel for more self-improvement videos. Comment below to tell us how useful you found this video. Remember to share on various social media platforms to reach a wider audience. Click the notification bell to get notified anytime we post a new video. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video.